Friday the 12th, earlier this morning, I could not stay awake after I took the medicine. Right now I'm still so drugged by chemical restraints that uh, um, I don't remember what time that was. I, I started writing notes to, to keep track because these medicines just cause confusion and forgetfulness and but you can see that um, there's this wax that's on my face and they put this on my face and on my hands, arms, body, neck, um, pretty much all over me many times and I don't know the purpose of it. I don't know why they do it. I don't know why they do any of the crazy things that they do. But um, I regained consciousness encased in this wax and my hair was wet. I can see that uh, it looks like they used hair dye to put this gray and white in my hair. Uh, my hair was brown when I lost consciousness and now I regain consciousness and it's like this. And we can see the usual ridiculous nonsense that's been done to my hair. I haven't even seen it yet. This is my first look at it through this selfie camera, but I can see there's wax right here on my eyebrow, there was wax right here on my face, and here's a cup filled with wax that I've scraped off, and when I scrape off the wax and the different, I don't know what they put on my skin, they put wax mixtures of wax and glue and dye. They put dye to dye the hair on my arms brown and they put hair growth stuff um, to grow hair on my arms and the backs of my hands. I mean, these people, who knows why they do what they do? It's just madness and they've put hair growth stuff on my face and we can see that um, they also dyed this hair that they've grown um, they've dyed it white just craziness absolute who knows why they do what they do but um and of course, here's my mouth all crooked, pushed in to the left, and my face has been distorted, and they've cut my nose again. Um, I was starting to say, when I, when I scrape off the wax and the glue and all the stuff that they put on my skin, I'm always gentle because I'm, I'm only removing what's on the surface. I'm not trying to injure myself or stretch my skin or let's see it looks like they've made a cut at the inside of my eye right here we see redness right there and my eyes are burning and my vision is blurred from whatever they've done i see i've got a partial black eye right in here and on this side as well and these cuts here at the sort of bridge of my nose or near the bridge I guess technically right this one spots the bridge of the nose they've stretched the skin on my eyelids many many times they've injected um, 
wax and fillers into my skin many, many times. Um, there have been times you could just see the actual pin point where they inserted the, the, the syringe to inject the stuff. They've injected tons and tons and tons of wax and fillers into my nose and made my nose huge and misshaped and my face huge and misshaped and just just because they're utter weirdos that enjoy inflicting pain and sorrow I don't know what their problems are, I don't care what their problems are, I just care that they get put in prison where they can't hurt just anybody except themselves. If they want to do that, that, they're free to do that, but they shouldn't be free to hurt other people. So they really gone to town on making the left side of my face all smashed in. I see. They've gradually done that more and more, and today they've done quite a lot. You can see they put in tons of filler in my left eyelid um, so that my left eye doesn't match my right eye, and you can just see this enormous amount of stuff they've injected in my eyelid to weigh it down and cause all these folds and I know that all of this sounds completely insane um, and you you have to wonder you know what is their motivation for doing these things um, I guess part of it is if you commit crimes in a way that seems completely uh, um, improbable and implausible, um, it helps you get away with the crime because an ordinary person such as myself is going to think, why on earth would anybody do this? Um, they must be crazy. So either they're doing it to plead insanity or um, or or to make the victim uh, I'm not the only person that they've disfigured in this facility uh, to make the the person reporting the crime who's just reporting facts uh, sound like they must be crazy but Somebody put wax all over me, and where would I get wax, you know? Like, I didn't do this to myself. I, um, I don't have the motive. I don't have the means. I don't have the opportunity. You know, clearly, others are inflicting this on me. Criminals are inflicting this on me. And um, I... I have to just conclude that the reason that they do it is, um, I just got this, I just kind of wiped this stuff out of my eye. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, kind of in the middle of my finger, there's this little bunch of I guess it's wax. Actually, it looks like a couple. I can see a little, two different little lumps of it right here. Let's see if I can get it on my thumbnail. Yep, we can see it there on my thumbnail. If I hold my thumbnail sideways, you can see the lump. Um, the hacker keeps blurring my camera because um, the hacker installed rootkit malware
for anybody that's not familiar with what rootkit is you know do an internet search it gives the hacker administrator control and if you're not familiar with what administrator control is look that up online as well it just gives the the administrator has the same control as the owner of the phone in fact they take the control from the owner of the phone um, and anybody else that that might have access to control the phone um, the administrator of the phone uh, or of any device it could be a phone it could be any kind of electronic computer device um, is able to change settings and hide settings and um, just do anything that you could do on your own phone like start recordings stop them alter them blur them just you know just anything that any capability um, the administrator has and even when my phone is in uh, airplane mode even when I've turned off mobile data and made sure that every possible connection to my device is disabled um, there's always still uh, the Wi-Fi beam coming out of the top of my phone because the hacker has enabled Wi-Fi to be on on my phone constantly um, to continue to monitor everything that I do all of the time. Um, I guess that's part of how they uh, um, can keep track of my uh, when I'm going to leave my room to go to the vending machine or go to the nurse's station or something to give them the opportunity to um, go in and, and um, just do stuff in my room although you know ever since they've been drugging me with chemical restraints they really don't have a need to um, wait for me to be out of my room to ransack and steal and vandalize my property anymore they can do it at will whenever I'm drugged unconscious um, in addition to whenever I leave my room, but they seem to like to enter my room every single time I leave my room. So, for example, I'll go to the vending machine, and if I forget and I leave a drink open on the table next to me, um, uh, they'll, they'll pour something in any open drink that I have. Every time I'm drugged unconscious, or every time I leave my room, somebody darts into my room and they pour stuff into my open drink so that it just coats your mouth, and um, it's the same stuff that they put on patients' food. It's this highly concentrated stuff. I've video recorded it before, like, um, in fact, I probably have some cups of it right here. Oh, it looks like the criminals have been in my room and helped themselves to uh, to take away evidence and but uh, like for example a while ago, um, I um, I showed how from one of the tablets of chemical restraints that they gave me, and I watched them take it out of the blister pack from the pharmacy. So there should be nothing wrong with it, right? It just came from the pharmacy. It should uh, be conducted under a sterile. Uh, I mean, they should make medicines under sterile conditions um, with no impurities introduced and so on. Um, but 
the instant the medicine touched my tongue, when I put it on my tongue and then reached to get a, a drink to take a sip, um, the surface of the chemical restraint drugs that they give me um, has this stuff that just turns all bubbly and foamy. And I've recorded this many times before, and this is what it looks like after it's all dried out. Um, but you can see still, um, let's see if I can get a good shot of it. Um, you can kind of, well, the hacker's blurring the camera. Otherwise, you'd be able to see what I can see, which is a bunch of tiny little bubbles of different sizes um, because the surface of the um, medicines straight out of the, the pharmacy packaging, they call it a blister pack because it's got individual, um, each individual tablet is encased in a clear plastic bubble. Um, so you can see what's inside and the backing of they're on a cardboard card. Um, so behind the tablet on the opposite side from the plastic, there's foil. And then behind that foil, there's more cardboard. So the front of the card is cardboard and the back of the card is cardboard. But then the back side of the well, maybe both sides of the cardboard, I don't know, have a, a foil on one side. And then there's cutouts for the, the plastic of the so-called blister pack um, that encases the medicine. Anyway, these chemical restraints, as usual, just make me ramble and kind of lose track of the point that I'm trying to make. And... The point that I'm trying to make is that they put things in my drink. So when I open the drink, it's fine. You know, I pop open a brand new can of soda or whatever, and, um, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But then I leave my room, and I come back, and I take a sip. Or I've learned to just not even take a sip, to just, um, you know look for evidence that they've poured something into it and then I just don't drink it. I just have to open a brand new one and so I've wasted innumerable cans and bottles of uh, drinks of various kinds from, you know, coconut water to, to vegetable juice to you name it. Um, all of my food and all of my drink just gets spoiled Every time I'm unconscious and every time I leave my room, somebody comes in and um, essentially, I was going to say poisons, but that's not the right word exactly, although I'm sure that stuff, ingesting it, I'm sure is not good for anybody. Um, but uh, it uh, doesn't have an immediate effect of poison. Um, Long term, it's probably, um, you know, really bad for the body. But um, so they pour the same stuff into my drinks and onto my food that they pour onto patient food that they deliver from the kitchen. They pour this oil that has this highly concentrated. Um, stuff that just bubbles. It makes zillions and zillions of bubbles from just the tiniest drop of it. And um, it's got to have some purpose, but I don't know what it is. But anyway, um, I see I've got a bunch of uh, wax on my face right here. So let's see if we can show well, actually, it's kind of dried out on that side. It's more... Um, not exactly liquid, but 
it's more pliable on this side. There's a whole bunch of it, as you saw, I already scraped a whole bunch of this stuff off of my face. Um, I mean, it was all over my face, a ton of it on my forehead, and there you go, you can see it under my fingernails. Um, I'm going to get the, the cup that has a bunch of this already in it that I just scraped off before I started recording. Now I'm going to record this going into the cup we just saw it drop. going to see if I can remove this on film carefully so it doesn't fall anywhere but in the cup. So I've just taken it from under my nail onto my thumbnail and we can see this big old clump of wax on my thumbnail now. And we're going to Show it dropping into the cup now. And the hacker is blurring the camera, what I'm seeing on the screen. And there we go, it just dropped into the cup. So that just fell into the cup. So again, it's August 12th, and um, I lost track when I started recording this. I started to say, um, I didn't know what day it was when I regained consciousness this morning I I thought it was Monday I mean I've been drugged so much this week that I was trying to think what day is it is it Monday the last day that I could clearly remember was Sunday um, I've been drugged Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday so drugged that just didn't, didn't know what day it was. And um, I recorded another video where I was very upset because I, um, I wanted to call a friend of mine on his birthday on August 10th, and I wasn't able to because I was drugged all day until about 3.30 in the afternoon, and when I regained consciousness, it was too late to call him or text him because he lives in England, he's English, and um, his brother, who was someone I, I was closer to than, than even him, um, uh, he, he passed away, and I haven't spoken with my friend since I learned about that about a month ago. And I've been kept drugged for so long that it has prevented me from being able to just, you know, mourn and grieve properly and then contact my my friend's mom and and my and my my friend. Well actually they're all my friends. Um their mom is my friend, the two brothers are my friends and They're, um, they're English rock stars from the 1960s and um, super talented musicians and and I'm heartbroken that that my friend passed away. So I'm noticing I've got tons and tons of loops in my hair, all over, everywhere you look. Someone spent a lot of time arranging my hair to look like this. And one of the things that they like to do is pull out one hair like this, and they'll have it sticking in my eye, or 
Oh, I see there's actually two hairs that are kind of pulled out. Um, so somebody really, really went to a lot of trouble today to put all these loops. It's so bizarre. It's it's unbelievable that they drug me unconscious so that they can molest me physically and then cut me and and then somebody does these strange things to my hair and um Everybody that works here uh, knows this is happening, and they know who's doing it. Um, the abusers, I mean, they openly abuse patients here. And everybody's aware of what's been done to me and who has done it, because um, when they abuse patients, um, they've done this to me. I've seen them do it to other patients. A, a group of employees will go and gather around the room or the either the patient room or the area where the abuse is going to take place. Sometimes it takes place in the hallway or the dining room. Um, and the abuser will go up and just start abusing and harassing the patient and the patient will be trying to just get away from it and saying, you know, leave me alone or stop or they'll try to ignore it or, and they'll try to walk away. And the, the abusers, one or more criminals, will continue abusing relentlessly. They won't stop until the patient reaches their breaking point. They'll just keep at it, just keep abusing, keep abusing, keep abusing until the patient reaches their breaking point and they either burst out crying or shouting or getting angry or whatever whatever their reaction is. And then the criminal that's or criminals, plural, that are committing the abuse will stop and walk away and that'll be the end of it is that's their goal is to get the patient to break down. And meantime, everybody that's gathered as an audience to witness and enjoy this um, bursts out laughing. And one or more of the audience members, the employees that are witnesses um, for their own amusement and entertainment, um, they're also video recording. One or more of them video record the abuse and the patient's breakdown and um, I've come to conclude that part of the reason for doing this, I think there are a couple motives. One is just enjoyment. The criminals enjoy doing this. It's a lot of fun for them. And the other is that they can um, just take snippets of those video recordings of uh, the patient breaking down and shouting or crying or, you know, just being out of, you know, just extremely upset and they can just take that little portion of the recording and claim that that's the patient's normal behavior and use that as a supposed justification for giving chemical restraint drugs like antipsychotics or um, antidepressants or something. However, any responsible doctor, I've done a lot of uh, study of this since I learned about chemical restraints after they started being used on me, any responsible doctor will avoid the use of chemical restraints. They'll try every other means first, and if they do use any kind of chemical restraints, they do it with the patient's informed consent for a limited period of time with proper supervision. Um, first, they ascertain that there are no um, contraindications with the patient's medical conditions and other medicines that the patient takes. Um, 
they also inform, uh, so they make sure that they don't give the patient something that will be harmful and interact harmfully. Um, then they inform the patient of adverse effects and side effects and things that the patient should bring immediately to the doctor's attention if uh, these adverse effects occur. Um, so that the doctor will stop that medicine and um, and they give antipsychotics and things like that for a, a specific period of time. They do careful monitoring and it's all very controlled and open. It's not, they just decide that they're going to drug patients and just give patients counterfeit medicine or grind up the, the the medicine and sprinkle it on the patient's food or drinks or something, that's illegal. You have to have the patient's informed consent. If the patient can't give informed consent, if they have a conservator, the conservator has to give informed consent. If they don't have a conservator, um, it, it has to be discussed with some kind of responsible party, not financial responsibility, but a, a, a party who's a friend or a family member um, that is concerned about the patient's well-being. Um, and so there's supposed to be uh, the patient choosing their own care and agreeing to their care, consenting to their care, having knowledge of it, choosing whether going to uh, involve themselves in that treatment and accept it and volunteer voluntarily uh, cooperate with it and at any time the patient can withdraw consent and that isn't done here I um, um, although the things that I uh, talk about as facts of the way that uh, I'm being treated and the things that are being done to other patients and that are being done to me, although they definitely sound wild and crazy. Um, we've, you've seen that, you've seen the cup of wax, you know, <laughs> in this video. So, um, it's, and you've seen my hair here, so you seen that this bizarre stuff is uh, going on and I don't have any uh, idea why these people are the way that they are but I just know that they need to have their licenses revoked and they need to go to jail uh, because what they are doing they're all crimes um, they're hurting people, they're hurting me and other people, and they should not have any opportunity to be around vulnerable people at all. And they should, ha they should be held accountable for what they've done to me and to other patients. So, that's, that's today's fun and games. I say fun and games, not for me. It's been fun and games for the staff, obviously. I would guess that this was uh, witnessed by uh, more than just the perpetrator that did this to me, or perpetrators, plural. I would guess that there were witnesses that were gathered to amuse themselves by witnessing it. I would guess that one or more of them video recorded the abuse and I've heard, everybody here that's sentient has heard that after these criminals commit abuse, the whole group of abusers uh, that's involved in the conspiracy, it's a conspiracy, they plan these crimes in advance, they gather to witness the crimes being perpetrated. Um, that's called conspiracy, 
Um, afterward, they walk through the halls laughing. They go to the nurse's station and they tell the people at the nurse's station what they've done. They share the videos to other uh, employees' phones. And they just walk throughout the whole facility. You can hear them like way down the hallway in the next hallway laughing their heads off and talking about the crimes they just perpetrated on patients. And um, so between them telling everybody in the facility, all the other employees, and then it gets reported from shift to shift. So around the clock, people hear about the latest abuses that have been perpetrated, the latest crimes that have been committed against patients, and they see the videos. Um, they, they get the videos shared to them. Um, everybody knows what's going on. They know the patients that are targeted, and the targets are chosen by the owner that works on site, and they're chosen by uh, certain managers that have the authority, but everything gets reported to that owner. She is the hugest busybody. Um, she roams throughout the facility, just eyes and ears open all the time, barges up and barges into conversations she has no business being involved in, and um, she's uh, she gives the authority to everything that happens. So she'll give general guidance as to who to target for abuse, and then she'll give general authority to people to continue abusing that person, and then everything gets reported to her. So she's also involved in all the hiring decisions of the two administrators that have worked here since I've been a patient here. And she trains, supervises, directs, if you can call it supervision, um, everything that happens in this facility. She gives orders that are instantly obeyed and permanently obeyed. Like one day she brutalized me in the dining room in front of many witnesses and then told the kitchen staff never to give me coffee and they've never given me coffee since. Um, they've given, like when they were still putting a coffee cup on my tray, it was something disgusting. It wasn't coffee. I don't know what it was. It was something that smelled and looked disgusting and it wasn't coffee. And of course I didn't drink it. Um, I subsequently put in writing that I want tea. So I asked for them to give me hot water, a tea bag lemon and two equal sweeteners and I've repeatedly put that in writing. I did that again um, I think it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday and of course they have not given me tea. I also put in writing numerous times do not put gravy or sauce on my food and I've put in writing um, do not put the bread or rolls on the plate with other food because they like to put the rolls right on top of sauce and oily vegetables so that the rolls, which might be the only edible thing on the plate, get sopped up 